Hi everyone, welcome back to Nails by Sora. I hope you're doing well. If you're new, welcome, welcome. Please take this time to hit that subscribe button and smash the like button and leave a comment down below, although you haven't seen enough of this video to leave a comment, but please leave a comment later. Uh, this video is going to be all about my Hello Kitty nails. It is going a bit fast right now because I'm just doing a slapdash vers version of an ombre just for some background color. Um, I'm going to try to walk you through how I painted these nails. I generally, generally speaking, when I do a character study or, well, not really a character study, a caricature study or some type of cartooning nail, I don't really talk too much about how I did it because I have no real process. I can only tell you what I did in this specific video, so I'm going to do that. Um, I did do it over the course of two days because I'm on the day that I did these nails, I had to go to bed early for work the next day, so I didn't want to spend too much time on it and get obsessed with it. So I broke it, I did the backgrounds and the Hello Kitty nail first, and then I did uh, Kuromi and Melody on the second day. But it's all going to be in one 45 minute video for you. Lucky you, I cut it down from two and a half hours. So right now I'm just putting, I'm dropping down some glitter. I did the ombre over the nails and actually it came out a lot smoother than it ever has before. Usually I use a specific ombre brush which has the bristles thinned out towards the edge so that you can have um, achieve more of a wispy um, look to the blending process. But I actually found it was quite easy just using the application brush and I got much more of a smoother blend doing it that way. So I might do a video coming up on blending with an application brush. But so I went and I did the ombre and then I put a base coat down and just placed randomly some glitters over the top. These glitters I got from Amazon. I'll link all the information down below in the description box. And now I'm just using a, de a detail liner. Yeah, a detail liner to put in what are lollipops in a picture that I downloaded of Hello Kitty and her friends. And I'm a little disappointed, not in the way they came out. I, I really liked the way they came out. But when I put in Karomi and Melody, it the characters blocked all of the background design. So if I do decide to do background designs in upcoming nail art, I'll probably put them on accent nails so that I can A, focus on the caricature on the, each nail and B, so that there's more personality to it and you don't lose the extraneous design elements to the characters themselves. But I'm just using, I think this is, I'll put the information in the description box as to the length of the bristles on this brush, but the this set of brushes I got for less than $20 on Amazon, I believe it was less than $20, uh, came with five or six brushes and they are without a doubt the best brushes I've ever used. They are so comfortable to hold, very easy to work with. The bristles move very well. They don't get gunked up with product. I just, I absolutely love them and I highly recommend them for any nail art that you want to do. But I'm just taking some, I believe this color is, it's something coral. I just got it in my, um, in a box set that I ordered from Madame Glam. Um, Tranquil Coral, something like that. Like I said, all the information will be down below. And so I'm taking that color and I'm taking this lighter pinky peach and I'm just alternating them in a swirl using the long liner brush.
So now that the lollipops are done, I'm going in and I'm putting in the rainbow. And it initially was just on this nail, but when I realized I was losing all of the extra design elements on the other nails, I decided to continue it on through to the melody nail, which I'm not really, I don't go into it at all later on in the video. I didn't film it because it's basically the same thing that I'm doing right now. I'm using Madame Glam neon colors and I am just laying a thin line down with my striping brush. The best tip that I can give you when laying down straight lines is let the bristles do all the work. What I do, generally speaking, is I lay down the point of the bristle and then I just pull it directly across the nail in the direction that the bristles go, if that makes any sense. Typically, I have the most success and the most uh, or the straightest line when I just let the bristles lead. So now I'm just using my dotting tool to lay in the face of Hello Kitty. And I was, I watch a lot of these videos where people, um, where nail artists sh uh, demonstrate how they do their caricature work. And I always find myself trying to emulate their techniques. And I feel like at this point I'm doing myself a disservice feeling thinking that it needs to be done that way. For instance, if they sketch out the entire outline of the character before they go in and they lay in any color, I feel, oh, well, that's the way you do it. That's the way it has to be done. But generally speaking, I have a lot of trouble laying out the proportions that way. And I think that's where I ran into some problems with Hello Kitty because her torso is a little bit long and it actually makes her look strangely a little adultish. Um, less cute and cuddly. So I try, I tend to go back and forth between filling in a large swath of area with my dotting tool before I go in and put in an outline because I can see that shape a little bit better. And when I went to do Melody, I started off with just doing the entire outline and then I ended up erasing her body, curing her head, and then just going in with the dotting tool and laying in the white the same way that I did with Hello Kitty's face because it just, it made it a lot easier to get the dimensions and the proportions accurate. So if I can give you any advice, I would say stay true to you if there's a technique you employ that helps you get the outcome that you're looking for, then use it. Just because somebody does it differently doesn't mean that their their way is right and your way is wrong. It just means that it works for them and this works for you. So that being said, I am using a um, a semi-transparent black. It's a shadowing gel from Nails by Dev and I'm using it just to outline Hello Kitty's body because I didn't want anything too dark that I couldn't go over later if I needed to adjust the dimension somewhat. But right now I am, what am I putting in? I am putting in her hand and I'm using that semi-transparent black to do so. And now I'm erasing it because I messed up the dimensions. So on this nail, um, as you can see, I, and actually on the other uh, two nails as well, I did a top coat in matte because it's easier to draw on top of it. You don't have to worry about the glare from the shine of the nail distracting you or distorting the image. And also it makes it so that, that there's no tacky layer and it's easier to get the, um, the harsh outlines that you're going for. If you're going to paint on top of an uncured, not an uncured, a, <coughs> excuse me, tacky layer, what's going to happen is it's going to kind of act like a blooming gel and the line is going to slowly start to bleed and it's going to look blurry. But you want really sharp detailed lines. So you either want to wipe the inhibition layer, buff your surface, or paint on top of a, um, a matte top coat. And that, usually speaking, I tend to stick with a matte top coat, but 
when I was doing Karomi and Melody, I just wiped the tacky layer. And when I was going in and erasing certain portions of the design, if I felt I made a mistake, I felt it came away cleaner from the matte top coat versus the um, top coat that was shiny but wiped free of an in inhibition layer because it seemed to kind of make it a little murky. It wasn't really coming away 100%. So I feel it generally works better to work off of a matte top coat and to use alcohol, not acetone, to clean away lines that need to be adjusted. So now that most of the details are done and the all the colors are where they need to be, I'm going in with my black gel paint from Madden Glam and I'm just tracing the outlines and emphasizing any areas that need to be um, brought into sharper focus, like the outside of her dress and the definition around her feet and her hands so that everything is outlined and everything looks the way it's supposed to. In the end, I'm going to give her her whiskers and I'm going to outline her nose and Hello Kitty will be finished. I do base coat again once everything is done just to even out all of the bumpiness between the different layers of gel paint. And then once that's cured, I go in and I do a final top coat.
So now we're moving on to Karomi. And as I said before, I did start out a little bit differently, starting with the outline on this one. I actually didn't have too much of difficulty doing the outline first on Karomi. I did end up expanding her head a little bit because she I felt it needed to be a little bit larger. It seemed in the photo that I was working with that her head was a bit larger than her body proportionally. So I moved her up a bit on the nail and then I widened her face to give it that uh, kind of cherubic look. And also because she's wearing the hood with the ears, it needed to be a little bit rounder to accommodate. And I, I did run into a problem where the angle of her, if you're looking at the nail, her left ear was a little skewed. So I kept making this line a little bit longer and changing the angle of this line and the ear wound up a bit larger than it was supposed to be. But she's cute and I think she may be my favorite out of the three. So I'm just going to actually let you watch the rest of these nails play out along with the music because basically it's all the same with doing the outlines or just filling in large swaths with the uh, dotting tool. And I, I mean, I absolutely love doing these sets. I fell off for a bit because I don't know, I, I think I got nervous about it, even though I did uh, the first two ones. I think the first one was Mickey and then the second one was uh, Scrooge McDuck. They came out a lot better than I ever could have thought that they would. I kind of psyched myself out a bit and I pulled away from doing these sets, but, and I've been wanting to do uh, because my sister is absolutely in love with Stitch. I've been wanting to do Lilo and Stitch for quite a while, but I keep pushing it off. So I'm going to be working on that next, and I look forward to bringing it to you. I hope you enjoy watching it. I look forward to it. And as I said before, please give me a like and a subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you always know when new videos are available. If you have any comments or questions, suggestions, please put them down in the comments section below and I will list all the materials I used in the description box below. And yeah, I'm just going to go silent now because I have my, my washing machine on in the background, which I'm sure you can hear and don't need to hear, but I'll pop in, I'll pop at that, I'll pop back in at the end to say hi and bye and moving on.